Hi, I'm Mark Penn, Chairman and CEO of Stagwell Inc. And uh, I'm pleased today to be sitting with Ajit Shavadasan. And he is, of course, Lenovo's head of direct to consumer. Uh, I myself am a big fan of all the emails that you send me for the Thank new you. products. Thank you. I respond to them. The, uh, I always joke, I'm CEO, so no one in the company ever sends me emails. All I get is Lenovo, Brooks Brothers, Sale, and, and I'm a sucker, okay, yep, I have absolutely. to tell you. So, uh, so I love direct-to-consumer. Uh, I'm going to be interested in hearing from you in terms of some of the trends we're seeing in the next set of devices uh, that, that are coming out because, you know, I'm also very excited by technology and the changes. Yeah, so I think we are at a point of inflection where I think you probably heard um, the AI-powered and enabled PCs that are coming out, uh, phones that are AI-enabled. Um, we are excited because we just announced a first one uh, with our partner Qualcomm. Um, later in the year, we are introducing products from Intel, AMD, NVIDIA. Uh, so I think this is a trend that you're going to see in the industry. I think in the next two, three years, we're going to see everybody having AI-enabled PCs that's going to do way more things than what we have done traditionally. Um, but, um, you know, if you really want to take a contrarian point of view, uh, I think that the bigger changes that we're going to see, two or three, I'll just say a couple of things that come to mind. The first one is I think 40% of the world still doesn't have internet and they don't have access to internet. So I think that there is going to probably be devices that are going to likely emerge from the mobile phone factor that's going to probably change the way we think about computing. Um, the other thing that I see that is uh, a contrarian point of view, and I think people are beginning to talk about this, is uh, the huge issue that we see with Gen Zs in terms of being ready for the workforce. I mean, next three years, we think 40% of the world's population uh, will rely on the Gen Z to actually do the work. And in some ways, people think the Gen Z is actually not ready, um, leadership-wise, creativity-wise. And part of it is, as we probably know, COVID did a number on everybody but I think the Gen Z's were affected the most. Um, so, uh, although we are going to have great devices and great technology over the next several years, I think what we are seeing is that maybe the people element of that is going to probably be a bigger problem than technology. Uh, great, so let's, let's explode that a little bit. Uh, AI-powered devices, like are they gonna get up and walk around? I mean, tell me what it's really gonna do that it doesn't do today. Well, I think the, the biggest one, and I'm not by any stretch of the imagination an expert on AI, uh, but I know enough to be dangerous. So I'll just tell you that the AI technology, when people start talking about robots and how the world is going to come to an end and machines are going to take over, I tell them uh, 25, 30 years ago, when the internet for the first time became commercially available, um, machines started using uh, a way to access the internet. Uh, AI is another technology that is going to make society more um, efficient uh, at one level. It's going to allow us to do things that we have not done for many, many years. I think it's got the potential to change and radically transform the lives of billions of people. Uh, what, at least what we are seeing is the initial phase of AI is going to enable and enable the workforce to be more productive, but also be able to drive the boundaries of creativity, um, our ability to actually uh, do multiple things at the same time, uh, look at drug discovery differently, um, look at how we actually live every single day, how we work every single day, how we play every single day. So I think the overall effect of AI is going to probably not be as visible uh, to, the, to the human eye because it's going to be just ubiquitous with everything we do. But the technology itself is basically our ability to um, power it at a astounding capability that we probably could not have imagined even 10 years ago. So uh, overall, I just think that the machines are going to come, they're going to do well, but nobody's going to be walking around and trying to take over the world, at least not for now. And are you going to be making any robots? Um, we don't have a stated goal right now, but I don't see a future without robots. So I think that it's coming. Whether or not Lenovo is going to play in it, we'll have to wait and see. And when it comes to that 40% without internet, are you saying that 40% is going to get internet? So there's going to be a broadening of the marketplace here? Well, I mean, I just look at broad trends and historical trends. Um, India, where I'm from, we actually skipped landlines and went to mobile phone, as an example. 
and that came out of dire necessity. So if you go to India today, even a street vendor, he'll use the phone to actually do everything, payments, whatever. So I think 40% of the people cannot afford the internet because, or a machine, because of extreme poverty, access, whatever the reasons are. So I think that that opportunity will get exploited. So the question is, is that the phone that's going to take over the place or is it a machine that's going to be affordable that people will, will use? So I think that technologists everywhere, I think, will um, attack that problem as it becomes much more pervasive. And are our devices, just as head of DTC, you could let me know, are they going to get more expensive because of all that AI or are they going to get less expensive because you're going to make simpler devices that, that for, for the entire world? Or yeah, I, again, um, we, if you look at the trends, a machine used to cost $6,000 for capability that was maybe one hundredth of what it is today or maybe even worse in terms of, um, in terms of uh, cost. But uh, we have seen that costs have come down quite dramatically. Right now, I think the costs are driven by technology that is not at scale. Um, chip, chips are expensive. Um, and uh, some of the AI development costs are expensive. So as we get scale, we'll see costs coming down. But initially, maybe the costs are going to be a little bit higher. Not a whole lot higher, but they are going to be higher than normal. But they're going to keep coming down, is my sense. And uh, these Gen Z workers, um, do you think they don't have the same work ethic? I mean, if I ask a Gen Z person, they generally think they are the greatest generation. I think it's a very interesting phenomenon that we see with the Gen Zs. I don't think it's a question of intellect. I think it's a question of motivation. And I think their experiences as they came out of COVID and as they went through school and being away and isolated, um, I think their mindset towards work and to everything, relationships, is different. So whether or not that is right or wrong, I think is just a judgment call. Uh, but if you ask the generation, they would say, hey, look, we are doing great, um, we are fine. But then the research would suggest otherwise. Um, definitely isolation is a problem. Uh, mental illness is a problem. Depression is a problem. And I think, um, I think might be that symptomatic of the generation. But clearly, the evidence suggests that there is a gap in things like creativity and leadership uh, from the generation. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me switch a little bit over to e-commerce. So what are you seeing in terms of technology purchasing is it switching more and more to e-commerce are people going back to i gotta kick the tires in the store what, what are we seeing there well i think we have been talking about omni-channel for the last i don't know 100 years um, and but finally we are at a point where omni-channel is becoming real now we see retail consolidation happening every single day you see retail stores and formats getting smaller big brands are building retail stores as a showroom to showcase their brand uh, so more and more you see the consumers that are comfortable buying online are moving online. So you definitely see that shift. Uh, but what is also interesting is that more and more brands that are traditionally retail are also embracing online. And a lot of the online brands are saying, look, there is a value in experience. So I think mm -hmm. a lot of the buying is becoming experiential. So that's the trend that we see. But I definitely think that the retail consolidation is happening. It's been happening for years, but I think it's going to accelerate. And has all the use of video and you know the change in really communications, is that making a big difference in the devices? For sure. Um, I think, again, I, I hate saying this, but the way we work has changed quite dramatically. And I think that Zoom and Teams and all those things have made it cool to actually, and actually not a, uh, not a spectacle to actually be on a Teams call. But you know, before COVID, if you're on a video call, people would think that's fancy. Today, we don't even think about it. So I think that uh, video definitely, uh, and communication definitely has changed dramatically, but also uh, mobile phones. I mean, the biggest single factor that drives the mobile phone is the camera. So I think that there is, um, there is a point to be made that visual communication and our ability to actually see somebody while we are having a conversation um, is important for human beings just because they feel a better connection. And I think that's, that's not gonna change. It's gonna continue to get better. Well, there's a lot of talk here about runaway AI and deep fakes. Are there things you're concerned about as technology develops? Yeah, so like with any new technology, I think what we don't know is a problem. And I think that there is serious concerns about ethics, um, serious concerns about bias, uh, privacy, deep fakes, all those things are very real. And I think that regulations will help, but also uh, ethical execution by companies, brands, and everybody else in the ecosystem, I think is, you know, it's important so that we don't end up in a situation where we contaminate um, the models, 
uh, contaminate the outputs and, and somehow get to a point where it becomes difficult for us to reverse out of it. Ajit, any other trends we've missed? Anything going on you want to point out? Well, I've been waiting for flying cars for a while, so hopefully in the next three years we'll see some of that coming up. How about um, some self-driving ones? Do you think <laughs> well, we're getting those? Absolutely. So self-driving is another one. I think um, you talk about AI. I think one of the bigger applications will be how we actually self-try. Uh, my prediction is that in the next 15 years, we are probably not going to have an IC engine. We're going to probably see electric takeover, and I think that transportation will be done by machines. Cool. Are screens getting bigger? You know, surprisingly, they are getting bigger and smaller. So there is premium for both, depending on the application. I think that for people who are gaming, as an example, they want very big screens. So we see massive screens that people use for gaming. And then people who are using screens for other things, they want screens to be smaller and more efficient um, because of the quality of the picture, the quality of the pixels. So I think you'll see both miniaturization and getting to the bigger side being a trend that's going to be in parallel. Great. Well. Ajit, I'm actually a big fan of your products. Thank uh, you. I, I look at the marketplace all, all the time, and I'm always impressed by the, the, the new designs and new features, I think, that Lenovo so quickly incorporates into its products. So thank you for sharing some trends with us today, and uh, I will, in fact, see you later. Thank you so much, Mark. Appreciate it.